Hello. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, first, my apologies for the delayed start. Um, we're working through some technical difficulties. Um, I'm Naledi Cabo I'm, on behalf of the Africa Tourism Association and our partner, Voyages Afrique. I welcome you to the Exchange Africa's second CEO town hall. The exchange was created in the midst and in response to the circumstances around the COVID pandemic. In addition to serving as a platform for information and connection, the exchange features a series of conversations that focus on African travel from various diverse perspectives. Um, the CEO Town Hall provides a platform for our tourism leaders to directly address questions and concerns posed by industry leaders, small and medium business owners, and travelers alike. Today's CEO Town Hall features the tourism board decision makers from Eswatini, Seychelles, and Zambia. We were to have been joined by Mr. Germer from Ethiopia Tourism, but due to circumstances, we look forward to his joining us at a later date. Um, also, based on the technical difficulties I mentioned before, we'll be having our guests join us as the session goes on. We didn't want to delay any further. Um, in addition to some housekeeping, before we get started, I just want everyone to know the session is being recorded and will be shared afterwards. To mitigate connectivity issues, we have collected as many questions as possible in advance, but we'll also take some of the live questions, so feel free to please drop them via the Q&A utility or through the chat. And now, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our esteemed moderator and host, Kojo. Um, Voyages of Greek publisher and, and video, video. And lead, us to the lead us to our conversation. Sorry, Kojo, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, let us apologize for the delay start to this, and we are all adjusting to this new normal. So. Uh, pardon us, and uh, again, uh, we happen to bring you the second uh, edition of the CEO Town Hall meeting, and privileged to be joined by two amazing women. Uh, it, you know, it was two on two for Seychelles and no, Seychelles, Zambia, um, Ethiopia, and Iswatini. But now we may have to start with this uh, woman, Linda, and Sherry. So thank you once again, Sherry. Let me. Let me start with you. And if Sharon, Mrs. Sharon Francis is the CEO of the Social Tourism Board. And, you know, it's a post that she's held in the last five years, six years, if I'm, seven if years. I'm, if I'm right. Seven, and she's going to. Seven years going on, eight years now. Seven years. Well, in a depth of experience, you know, uh, from her side. So, uh, what we do with the exchange and the CEO Stan Hall meeting is to be able to afford the, you know, main shakers of the sector, i.e. the tourism boards and the CEOs in the tourism ecosystem to help us understand what they're putting in place. Now we are in the process of restart. And I believe that they, you know, they, they, they sit in a very poor position to let us understand exactly what they've, they've put in place for us to begin the restart. So without further ado, Mrs. Francis, I'll come to you for us, for you to give us an overview of what's happening in the Seychelles Island. Okay, thank you, Kojo. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. It's, uh, it's a little bit after 5 p.m. Seychelles time, and so it's really getting to the inside for me. And it's a, it's a real pleasure to, to be here on this platform, and thank you, Kojo, and everybody who invited me. Um, I apologize I couldn't come for the, the previous one. Um, Seychelles. So, um, for um, a lot of you, I, th I think probably everybody knows where Seychelles is. We're one of these tiny group of islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. We have year-round summer, beautiful sandy white beaches, lush green vegetation, um, tropical vegetation all year through, and warm, friendly people. So uh, for us, we were... Um, uh, <laughs> I just see a comment. Um, we... Just like every other countries, we also um, uh, was affected with the with the COVID pandemic. Actually, we got our first case uh, um, somewhere mid uh, mid uh, March, and by end of March we had to basically almost end of March we had to basically go into what we call the severe restriction of movements because we had one case which uh, um, uh, we couldn't track how the person were infected. So it was uh, for precautionary measures, the country went into what you can call a lockdown basically. And we had um, what, if I should say the first 
the first with 11 cases um, and uh, everybody from the 11 cases where have been healed and uh, as of uh, 4th of May um, restrictions were lifted and further restrictions lifted as of 1st June we started receiving private charters um, to the islands as of 1st June until now this is the kind of tourism um, coming in on the island and uh, hopefully with God's blessing, um, first of August, we will be opening up um, uh, to the rest of the world, but what we are calling the low and medium risk countries. So there is still a significant amount of countries which uh, we are still considering it as high risk, which unfortunately for the moment would uh, still not be allowed to come into Seychelles. So perhaps if God, do you allow me a few minutes to just explain how we're going no, to do I, that, um, yes. opening up. 1st of August. Um, so the procedure, uh, travelers uh, for entry to Seychelles, basically what you need, uh, you would have had to take a, a PCR COVID test, um, um, which is should not be more than 72 hours old. Um, uh, for low risk countries, uh, countries um, um, in the case that PCR is not available, a rapid antigen test can also be considered. But medium risk, PCR, it's the gold standard for us. And uh, you have to submit this upon check-in and you also have to submit um, a copy to an email address which we provide in the visitor travel advisory because uh, submitting it to the Department of Health allow them to scrutinize the test result, um, the authenticity of the lab and things like that. So that in case they are doubtful, when you come in um, into Seychelles, they may perform another test on you. So other requirements for travel, you would need um, a travel voucher confirming your place of stay because right now it's only um, safe certified accommodations would be are allowed to take in visitors. So they have a list of uh, minimum requirements in terms of protocols that uh, hotels have to follow. Um, they would get a safe certificate and that will allow them to start receiving guests. And I think you would all know what are these protocols. It's basically physical distancing, um, screening of visitors and their staff, so the cleaning method, among some other measures to ensure the place is safe um, to receive um, visitors, but to also, uh, also um, um, keep our visitors safe while they're in Seychelles. So the whole process is about encouraging safe travel and safety safety while you are in Seychelles. So when you arrive at the airport again, there's the procedures, you may be subject to another test upon arrival. And of course, you will have to use only approved uh, um, operators on the island. So that's no. a little bit of a story for the, for the opening up. On no, the that's, that's, you know, uh, that's fine. I think we'll come to the nitty gritty of it and what the properties and exactly what the tourist board is doing to ensure that people have the trust because as we've been saying, trust will be the new currency and that's what will lead the recovery. Madam Linda Zumalo, good, good, good afternoon again and good, I think yeah, good afternoon again in, uh, in Iswatini. Can you walk us through uh, what Iswatini tourism is doing? Because I know we missed the bonfire and all of that. And I had the privilege of speaking to uh, Minister Villakasi, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm right. Yes. In, yes. Uh, Johannesburg, and you were telling us how it was expected. Now, COVID came, boom. And uh, you've not had a lot of cases, but obviously you just needed one case. And because of the source market and all of that, we still live in a very globalized uh, world. Can you tell us what Iswatin is doing? What is the situation right now? Thank you, Kojo, and thank you so much for inviting me to this um, Zoom meeting. Um, in Eswatini, um, maybe I should also take the privilege of uh, explaining what Eswatini no, is. Go ahead, you please. know, give us, give us, give us Eswatini. <laughs> Eswatini is 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 a landlocked country. We are uh, situated in the southern African region of of, of, of Africa, and we are neighboring South Africa and Mozambique. So we're basically sandwiched 
by South Africa and Mozambique. So that means that in terms of opening up to the international market, we will largely be dependent on what happens in South Africa and Mozambique. Now, going back into our experience with COVID, what happened to us is uh, we, we got the first case around end of March, beginning of April, and um, that was, was really quite a shock to us. And the immediate um, reaction from our government was that uh, they, they, they looked at the areas that had the highest risk of inf infection, and then those, those markets or those source, source markets were actually banned from uh, visiting Eswatini. And there was a sort of emergency that was announced by our government, and uh, there was a lockdown that was pronounced uh, mid, mid uh, f uh, April. And as we've been going through the stages, right now we're at a point where the economy is being eased down to take, it's being eased up and opened up to, to, to take into account issues of addressing people's livelihoods whilst we still do deal with the pandemic. What we have done as the tourism uh, sector is that we've worked very closely with the to with the tourism industry, and just yesterday we were launching um, uh, uh, safe health and safety guidelines for the tourism sector, which are going to be pretty much the blueprint blueprint of how all establishments in Eswatini are going to be uh, adjusting to the new normal. Um, so that really takes into account issues of social distancing, sanitization, and also issues of wearing a mask every time you come to a hospitality uh, establishment. Those protocols are actually uh, common in all retail outlets as well as filling stations and most of the, 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 the areas where our tourists uh, normally visit. But this launch that we had is, is quite important to us because it does position us as a destination that is uh, COVID compliant. We got certification from the World Health Organization um, and, and, and the UN was actually part of the, the, the was, was represented at the launch. So that is really our our quest to, pre to present and, and portray Eswatini as a as a COVID compliant um, destination, and we believe that the experience of tourists will be uniform. What we want to do is to roll that out to all establishments and to make sure that the policing of the compliance to those uh, guidelines happens. So we'll be rolling this out in the coming week, uh, make, uh, making sure that all the the the, the hospitality property owners are fully trained and they are able to open their doors to tourists. A follow-up question is, how, how are you going to ensure that these facilities adhere to these uh, uh, protocols? Because often than not, we have the law, but in terms of its practice or its enforcement, we, we, we tend to you know, uh, fall short in that. So what is the practical measures that the tourism board, in collaboration with the health, the health department, and then with the private sector, are putting in place to ensure that people adhere to it. Um, thank you, Kojo. The mo most important thing is that we will definitely take all uh, property owners through training so that everybody knows exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And and we have already started sharing the soft copy of the guidelines to everyone. And uh, uh, over and above that, we'll be working closely with the municipalities. The municipalities actually take care of the policing aspect of, of, of all health and safety protocols. Before COVID, uh, they, they used to go through all the establishments to just make sure that they monitor and control compliance. So so they have taken this a step further to have a checklist of all of uh, of all the, the the protocols and all the expectations from a COVID point of view, and all the property owners will have to be going through that. So there'll be, there's going to be random checks that are going to be happening, and our minister as well will also be doing random checks, uh, going through all the uh, uh, the hospitality uh, uh, places, and um, also uh, really that, that that's that's just what is going to be happening. Um, there's also going to be a number that people are going to call in and, and, and report if there's anomaly in terms of their experience or their expectation at the, at the, um, at the hospitality. Yeah. So, so that is going to be happening as well. So that there's going to be sort of, sort of a whistleblower 
uh, aspect of it so that everything is, is well controlled. The other key element that I want to share is that we will be going into a digital platform of tracking and tracing our tourists. Uh, we are at launch, at, at, at piloting stage of that pro project and we will be launching it uh, soon, as soon as, as, soon as uh, our, our developer says everything is, is, is okay. So we want to be going digital in terms of the tracking and tracing, which is a big part of, um, the, of, of conforming to the guidelines because everyone that comes to tourism spaces has to be fully recorded and their temperatures and everything. So we want to automate that so that there's going to be a seamless uh, movement of tourists uh, going through Eswatini and all the, pro the product owners within Eswatini will have to be connected to that uh, digital platform. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Sharing, I have a question for you from, uh, I mean, from, from, from the chat button about what will be the cost. Again, my own question is that there's a conversation about to quarantine or not to quarantine. Now, there's another school of thought who believes that if you quarantine, then now, what will be the incentive? Because maximum people spend about 10 to, to 14 days. That's for leisure travelers. You know, so uh, how are you handling that, that aspect of quarantine or not to quarantine, or the, you've put in place some, uh, you know, form of measure that would make it attractive for people to come to, to, to this nation? Um, for the moment, for the moment, because it's more the private planes coming in and we are more or less going to the island resort. So um, this automatically takes care of itself because they are sort of self-quarantine on quarantine. the island. Okay. And the island is quite small. There is not a lot of room, so um, it works automatically itself without any any much efforts. But for the reopening, uh, we've realized um, if uh, visitors are subjected to quarantine, um, it will not work. Nobody will travel to come and be quarantined for 14 days. So this okay. is why for us it was important that we were able to promote safe travel and safe stay. Um, a little bit what my colleague Linda have mentioned from, for us, it was from the point of departure, you do your test, you know already you're more or less safe. I know the test um, does have a, a certain margin of error, but which is very small. Um, the test uh, that you have to take before you, you leave your country of origin, it will depend on how much it costs in your country. But I do realize more and more the students are asking for the test now. And what we've realized, it's becoming more widely available and the cost in a lot of countries are going down. Um, for example, in Germany, um, a few weeks ago, it was almost not available for anybody traveling. It was somewhere around 300 euros. But now at the airport, Frankfurt, they are doing it for 79 euros. So it just shows that over the time, um, when there's more demand for the test, the price will go down. And for us, it was about safe travel. We want the traveler when they come, they need to feel that they are more or less safe to travel. The neighbors sitting um, next to them on the plane have been tested as well. And of course, this is where when they reach, say, we call this the risk filters. The first one is the test. And yeah. if need be, when they get into the country at the airport, they might be tested again. Um, and the, the reason why, just like other destinations have done, um, we are ensuring that uh, um, all services the, the, the visitors uses are actually certified, safe certified. So the, um, the idea here is to provide another risk filter. If um, everybody is following um, uh, the social distancing requirements or if um, social distancing cannot be achieved, then you wear the mask at the hotels also. They, they've been, um, before they are opened, um, they've been trained. Um, there's intensive training going on to make them feel confident about, uh, about handling, uh, handling visitors. So the whole idea is, is um, you know, COVID, um, COVID is, is, until we are able to find a vaccine, and COVID is there. Yes. And we need to come back to some level of normality. And, and uh, going into quarantine is not an option for the moment. So this is why we really need to rely on the various risk filters we put along the way, which we believe um, it, it, it will work unless somebody really behaves 
irrationally. And this is where the enforcement will, will come right. in. Now, if, well. I, if, if, if you may permit, I, you know, I wanted to ask you that, how are you communicating or how are you uh, conveying the message to your source market? Because for Seychelles, and we know that kind of the type of uh, tourists who come to Seychelles, how are you uh, conveying the message to them? Because most of these core markets or your, your strong source market were affected. And, you know, restarting tourism, how are you, you know, uh, uh, what mechanism are you putting in place to ensure that these markets would, would have the trust and confidence in the island? Um, I, I, I believe um, the fact that uh, as a as a destination, um, we've been able to manage the situation quite uh, um, effectively, if I should say, um, uh, we've not had uh, so far no community transmission, um, and and a lot of uh, out out there. If if uh, the echo we we do get from our partners is people see Seychelles amongst uh, the handful of destinations, which is considered safe. So already that uh, um, is um, uh, a strong point for us. We are not COVID free, but having managed the situation well. Uh, does give people some sort of, uh, of confidence. The fact that we are not a mass market destination also plays very highly um, on our side as well. Um, a lot of our resource, Kojo, you know yourself, it's not huge, um, big resorts. Uh, our, our largest resorts have 300 odd rooms, but we'd have a lot of resorts which have up to 20 rooms, 10 villas, 15 villas. So, um, and a lot of our um, accommodation types actually do provide the a lot of privacy, um, a lot of uh, feeling, um, the idea of feeling isolated with your family or whoever you're traveling with, so you're not really mixing. So we are we are using we are using this um, in our communication a lot because we realize um, the type of traveler emerging out of uh, um, this pandemic. A lot of them they, they want uh, um, they want to be they don't want to go to crowded tourist site. This it's it's yes. not. It's, yes. not, it's not attractive anymore. They want to go to places where um, it's, uh, it's isolated, where um, you're not sharing the facilities um, with, with, with a lot of people. Um, and we have a lot of this kind of accommodation in Seychelles. And we, we are using that. Aside from all the risk filters we have put in place to ensure um, sort of um, ens ensuring they feel safe. Sorry. while um, they are in Seychelles, but we're also using the advantage of our USP as a destination also to tell them this is one place you can feel safer um, to come on your holiday, especially that we know people have been in confinement. And, and out of this period, if there's one thing which uh, I believe have developed from a lot of the readings I'm doing is um, the need to, to reconnect, either reconnect with families, reconnect with nature. There's been an appreciation and um, develop a, a new appreciation for, for nature in general. Um, uh, and people just want to reconnect with their soul, with their inner self. So uh, for us uh, um, as, as, a, as a destination, we, we know these are our strong points. These, this is, these are cards we can really play very well with, with together with the safe label. And, and we are ensuring that all of this is communicated effectively to our partners because about 50% of our business still comes from the traditional shop, but we also doing it um, uh, via all of our communication uh, medium. Plus one, okay. No, thank you, Shereen. And again, thank you for joining us. Uh, Linda, I, if I may come to you again, we all know that lock, complete lockdown is not sustainable, okay? We will still travel. Now there's a, there's a, a, a restart, uh, restart strategies and what is uh, Iswatini doing to open the borders? And then you know, in, in the possible situation that you have a tourist who is infected, how do you handle that? Do you, do you have a clear protocol of how you handle that or a designated place that these tourists or these tourists can, 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 uh, you know, can be taken to? 
Um, thank you, Kojo. In terms of the how, how the protocols of how we handle an, uh, someone who is infected, um, what we do is that all hospitality uh, property owners have been advised through our guidelines that they need to make sure that they have an isolation room that is there, so that in 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 an, in an event of a case happening, then they take the, they take that person to that isolation room, and then whilst the person is there at the isolation room, they need to call our emergency number uh, 977 so that the health practi practitioners are going to bring in an emergency vehicle to take care of, of, of that uh, tourist and then from there on the health of uh, practitioners will take that person through for further screening and testing and if that person is found to be truly uh, in infected with the virus then they'll go through all the protocols of, 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 of our health uh, ministry in terms of getting um, assistance and support in that regard. And we have a dedicated um, doctor who is going to be taking care of our tourists so that our tourists really do feel well taken care of. Right, so the okay. tourism... Yeah, the tourism industry has actually said in as much as oh, everyone is being taken through the government route, but there's going to be more care that's going to be uh, uh, applied to to our tourists in that regard, yes. Let me, let, me, let me follow up with this. Now, this will all come at a cost, okay? How are you sharing the cost or how are you taking the cost? Because if you still want to ensure that tourism is part of your, your economy and you're going to open the borders, people... Travel will be expensive, right? And if you are looking at doctors for facilities and properties, who is going to pick up the cost? And this is a new cost area that we have to deal with it. So from the Iswatini point of view, is it the ministry? Is it going to be a, a travel type thing? Or the facility and the tourism board and the command council would have to come together and see how you can support the, the, the sector. Do you have a clear idea how that cost will be, will be, will be, you know, be taken? Um, uh, it will be a collaboration between the government and the Central Command Council, but then the tourism uh, sector and the industry itself, the, 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 the private sector, has taken it upon themselves to make sure that uh, that is going to be given full attention. And I, I do believe that's going to be in, there's going to be health insurances that are going to be backing up that, 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 that whole arrangement, but I do not have the crystal details on it at the moment, but because it is still it's work in progress, but yes, but the discussions that I've had with the, with the chairperson of HOTES is that they really are working on that and, and, and it is something that they're moving forward with. What's your son on quarantine or not to quarantine? What are you going to do? <laughs> in terms of that, <laughs> when, 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 when the lockdowns uh, and the travel restrictions started, um, it was quite a concern for us because with South Africa saying they're giving 14 days uh, quarantine uh, in Mozambique, obviously our neighbors, that meant that when someone comes to S14, they're going to have 28 days uh before they even start their holiday so for us it is something that is very prohibitive and it's not something that we would want to do really be dealing with what 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 uh we've been discussing with the ministry of foreign affairs and the and, and the minister of home affairs as well is that um right now what is obtaining is that people from south africa when they come through to eswatini for emergency purposes or of course and and business uh, at the moment uh, they need to make sure that they have tested three days before coming in to avoid the quarantine situation. And of course, that is still at infancy. We're still starting in terms of uh, implementing that. But uh, if you have had your test in three days, then that, that, that is being eased on you. And then when you get into a Swatini, maybe you get test again, tested again, and then you go through. Okay. And, 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 you know, and now, how worried are you with South Africa's uh, situation in terms of the numbers? Because South Africa is a very is a core market for you. Um, in terms of the numbers, you mean in terms of the arrival numbers no. to Eswatini from South Africa? No, I mean uh, in terms of the spike in numbers, i.e., the COVID numbers. Oh. Again, you can just oh. put that in in, in context of how, what South Africa means to uh, Eswatini, because I know there were there were a number of uh, bookings for the bonfire and you know all of that. So, in that in that uh, perspective, do you think that? It uh, is a you know a direct impact on your market. 
It certainly is because South Africa is is actually the leading. Um, source market for us. They contribute uh, over 70% in terms of arrivals to Eswatini in, in, 20, in 2019. So, so South Africa is a key source market for us, which is why all our protocols and everything that we do, we work very closely with uh, South Africa to make sure that uh, we are well aligned. Also from, from an air travel point of view, we depend on, on, on South Africa to a very large extent. Although our aviation sector is also now at a point where they are looking at other options and make sure that we are, we are linked to more, 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 more countries so that there's going to be a better connectivity to, to, to reaching Eswatini. No, thank you, thank you very much. Sorry, I, I, let, me, let me come back to you again. There's a question of people are saying that we will start, you know, uh, tourism's restart will begin with domestic, regional, and then we go to international. I know for Seychelles, yes. you, you don't have very robust or very strong uh, domestic markets, okay. Do you have any thoughts about how you're gonna, even in your own way, in terms of how you want to, to, to um, uh, you know, get people traveling from Mahe to Prali or Dennis Island or something? Okay. Koja, um, that is, is, is actually, I'm sorry. No, that's um, right. Sorry. Side, sorry. Um, from our side, that is already happening. Um, okay. A little bit uh, um, of statistics, um, um, Seishirwa in general are, are normally a well traveled a well traveled population they would normally take about two or three holiday overseas yes. in a year and with the travel restrictions this has not been possible and it will not be possible um, I suppose anytime soon there will be a lot of people thinking twice before traveling. So already there's a, a quite a bit of hotels in Seychelles offering residence packages, especially on the weekends and now especially for school vacations and they are extending it during the weeks and uh, they are fully booked. You will not believe it, even with a, a crisis on hand where the governor of central banks are telling people to, to be cautious with their spending, not to spend on luxury items. <laughs> um, they, uh, these hotels are still receiving a lot of um, a lot of businesses from the local population. And it's something which it, it's actually uh, um, in the, the marketing meeting for 2020, not knowing that COVID would be there. It was somebody that I elaborated on with the travel trade because we had a bit of statistics to show the spending power of people locally in restaurants, for example, and, and it should be an integral part of their strategy, but which now COVID has sort of uh, fast tracked this strategy, and I hope it is a strategy that will stay um, for the long run as well, not just part of uh, um, um, sustaining their business during the, the COVID period. But the revenue, I have to say, that you will get from, from domestic tourism is not the same as oh, what yes, you will get yes. from tourism. So it's basically it's a exchange, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> One, yes, it doesn't bring foreign exchange into the, the country, it's true. which we... <laughs> You really rely on tourism for that, and two, um, uh, um, the, it's residence rates, so they are really charging uh, marginal rates um, to sustain their business, for them to pay their fixed costs, and not really to to make a, a huge a profit margin, really. Um, but for us, um, we realized um, the challenge we have ahead, given that, uh, for example, Europe are, are more encouraging Europeans to travel uh, within their country and regionally, which is within Europe, and not um, to consider overseas travel um, anytime soon. And uh, for us also, like um, coming back to early, earlier conversations, we have, we have a strength, Seychelles. Um, being a bit exclusive, um, we do have a certain segment of visitors that would that normally would travel yes. to us. That they are not affected by any sort of crisis. Yes, they they, they lose a bit of money, but um, traveling to to um, places like Seychelles um, would still remain on their on their on their list okay, of least, things. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we don't really need um, a huge amount of visitors yeah. because we don't really do the mass. As long as we can really target um, to the, the segment in, in um, it's, it's more now quality tourism. It, it's, uh, it's really going into a segment that you try and tap a little bit more um, to get them to visit so that the country may start collecting a bit of foreign exchange because again, we, we, we depend on tourism for that. And a lot of our things in Asia are important. We don't have enough uh, land to manufacture our own things. We have to import almost everything. So um, to at least start receiving a bit of foreign exchange. The caveat with that, no. of course, it's okay, a certain ahead. group of establishments that will benefit. We will have, unfortunately, um, uh, the lower end of the spectrum there that will not start receiving visitors very, very soon if you go with the, with the, with the luxury strategy, but you, we don't really have a choice. We just need to be able to start receiving a bit of tourists to start with, and then we can extend our strategy to the other segment as things uh, improve. Okay, so there's a, there's a question from Conrad, Conrad Mitala, I mean, who's saying that, do we have trees capa capabilities as tourists coming just in case uh, of a situation or the, that you, you, you need to trace? Just as I ask, uh, you know, uh, Linda, do you have where, because you mentioned earlier that there are resources that has been designated as a, as a, as a certified place but if i come yeah. to see shows now and uh, unfortunately I'm, I'm i'm ill or i'm i'm declared as positive are you i mean do you have a standby uh, resort and medical team that can take care of you so far um, um tracing contact tracing are being done um, manually we do have a team um, a dedicated team at the Department of Health that uh, um, is there uniquely for that to do the contact tracing and uh, um, the procedures in place also is to allow for traceability. So um, there's a whole series of procedures which allowed of keeping records of your visitors and all that to, um, uh, for example, in a, in a restaurant where you have to do reservation, pre-booking, so, and be allocated to a seat to allow for traceability. But we are also working on an, um, an application to allow for digital tracking of visitors okay. even. We are hoping the, the system would be up and running come 1st of August. Our, we're really working hard that it'll be running um, when we started receiving our first guest. So, but we do have a backup system, which is the manual um, traceability, where um, um, every service provider will need to find, um, they, they've been given different option of how to do um, the traceability um, of uh, visitors. So the DMCs have to do it for their visitors. And we even have online booking sites as well, offering um, uh, digital uh, um, um, ability for, for traceability as well. So we're looking into all the options. The manual one is, is our first option. Um, the procedures we have in place would allow for records to be taken for that to, hap um, to happen. Okay. So um, then uh, contact tracing doesn't become a, a nightmare. Um, but eventually, come August, uh, we want also to have digital ability to, to trace uh, visitors as well. Okay. Now, uh, come August, I mean, you, you have the, uh, the airlines will be coming in, but do you have some understanding with them? Or have you had meetings of, of how they're going to operate flight to the Seychelles Island? Because I know that uh, airlines are you know, expected to, 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 to add, you know, uh, enforce a certain protocol with the traveler. So if, I, if I'm to come to Seychelles from the, from the States, what are the airlines, you know, role in my travel okay. experience? Yes, yes, we, we have shared the advisories with the, with the airline. Um, basically, first, we would have uh, in the thematic, uh, what they call the thematic system, the travel requirements conversations. One of it is the airline will have to ensure that each visitor's boarding will need to have a negative um, PCR test because this is a prerequisite for entry into Seychelles. But upon arrival in Seychelles, there's a whole set of criteria and the Civil Aviation Authority 
already shared their um, standard operating procedures to these airlines. Basically, um, uh, for example, visitors would have to disembark the planes in the order of seating in their plane. And there's a whole set of procedures um, once they get to the, to the airport, the screening and everything. And actually, um, we were supposed to have a drill today, but it's been postponed to later during uh, to, uh, next Monday, a real live drill of we would have a full load of uh, plane essentials would be um, disembarking passengers to test the process and see um, how it's done and where we actually might have lacking to just ensure that uh, the, the process is as streamlined as possible. It's not cumbersome for visitors, but at the same time, so ensuring safety all throughout um, the journey. So um, these have been the, 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 the protocols of the um, SCA, which is our Civil Aviation Authority, have been shared with the airlines. Okay. Uh, before I go to Linda, I, I, I just want to touch on this because you, you, you mentioned earlier, I recall that in the early stages of COVID, you, you are taking, I think, 60% of cost of travelers sometimes where they have to quarantine them. And uh, I remember the famous uh, guests from Netherlands and you know, whatnot, et cetera. Now, if people come in and then, uh, because we know that you can contract the disease even at the airport or you know, uh, in the flight, when they are tested as positive, Okay, do you have a certain arrangement with the hotels or with, you know, with the civil aviation that the cost of uh, you know, stay for that guest, who takes, who takes care of that, that uh, cost? Hello, Sharon, can you hear me? The question, sorry, was for, no, that's for, for uh, can you just repeat the question, please? I was, I was reading. No, the no, 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 that's, that's, you know, that's fine. Uh, I was saying that, do you have now a standard practice that if I come to the shows now and then say at the airport or somewhere, because I will take the test before the flight, I'm negative, but you know, whatever the, 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 you know, <laughs> the virus will appear after the airport and, you know, disembarkation of that, I'm, I'm positive. In terms of the cost of, uh, you know, quarantine, what, yes. what, what's the arrangement? Um, actually, this is uh, one of the reasons, which I, I actually did not mention, one of the prerequisites of travel is uh, every traveler will need to, to have a um, travel insurance with uh, ICUA cover. And uh, this is for any eventuality while in Seychelles, you fall sick, you need to go into the isolation um, for um, uh, that to be covered. And of course, for past cases, when visitors, uh, the, the few, very few visitors who fall, who were sick um, in the, the past month, um, they've had to, to cover the cost of um, isolation, um, the treatment, uh, the quarantine facility. So um, to avoid uh, um, this cost, this is why we are um, uh, emphasizing um, that it's a, an essential prerequisite that uh, okay. visitors um, have a travel insurance with ICUK coverage uh, before they can be allowed to enter Seychelles. And we know now that travel insurance are starting to cover for COVID-19 as well. No, 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 thank you very much. Linda, I, can, you, can you give me a date when you're opening your, or when you're likely to open your borders in Swatini? Uh, we don't have a specific date at the moment, okay. uh, but because obviously it will be dependent on our neighboring countries, but we have uh, received wind from South Africa that they might be opening around um, uh, July, August. So what we are doing also as well is to try and prepare and make sure that we align ourselves with them. For us, what is going to be important is the alignment and the collaboration with our neighboring countries so that as and when they open, then we, we open as well. Because we lend um, country and a lot of what we do is largely dependent on, on our neighboring countries as well. We also do want to promote travel uh, within the bloc that is South Africa, Eswatini and Mozambique. 
So we, we are already working with uh, South Africa and Mozambique to have agreements in place of how we are going to be moving forward. We have, we have had some of those agreements in place, but now that there's COVID, we do need to work closer together to make sure that uh, uh, we, we, we do have those uh, collaborations because people do travel in blocks. So within our block, we do want to make sure that people feel that there is um, a, a uniformity in, in, as people traverse the, 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 the block, which is South Africa, Mozambique, um, and, South, uh, and Eswatini. So indicatively, I would say uh, June, uh, August, September. September maybe is a more realistic uh, month to look at in terms of uh, opening of borders. But I did say that it is dependent on, on, our, neighbor, on our neighbors as well. Okay. What, what are you putting in place to stimulate uh, in, uh, domestic tourism? What um, measures are the tourism board put in place to stimulate uh, you know, uh, travel? Yeah. Well, well with, with domestic tourism, uh, our, our market re-entry strategy is, is, is starting, of course, with the domestic uh, tourism. Um, domestic tourism is a big part of, of, of how we want to come out of COVID strategically as a destination. What we want to do is to, we've, we've already started doing digital campaigns with the local people, and they've also started sharing stories of, of how they are experiencing uh, the kingdom of Eswatini. Uh, there's a group uh, that, is, that is, it is already, it's called Vagasha Eswatini, which means visit Eswatini, where the local people are just telling stories and showcasing what is available in Eswatini. And what we like about that is that it is organic and it's what people are saying and what they are feeling about the kingdom. And what we want to encourage as well as the tourism authority is to get more testimonials and experiential videos coming into the digital space so that the rest of the world can see what is obtaining mm -hmm. in Eswatini. Lonely Planet actually um, uh, uh, gave us accolades towards the end of last year that uh, Eswatini is a must-visit destination in 2020. Unfortunately, COVID happened. But having said that, what Lonely Planet said about Eswatini is still quite relevant. Eswatini is a country that is rich in culture, and it is home to the big five. And the beauty, beautiful thing about that is that Eswatini uh, is a small country and you can actually see the big five in one or two days. So, okay. so it, it will not happen that you will... It will not happen that you'll get to Eswatini and, and say you haven't seen a lion, you haven't seen a giraffe, uh, you know, you will definitely see all those animals. And the outdoor is our key selling point now because we do realize that even for the domestic market, people are quite sensitive of, of, of their faces. They do want to be out there and being in, in, in being more uh, outdoor is, is, is really what people want to experience nowadays. So we've seen the local people, the local market uh, going more into the, the, into hiking trails. And there's quite a number of interesting hiking trails and some of which you, you, you will hike within Gay, with, with, with also having an opportunity to view game in Eswatini, uh, and that you can do at, uh, at some of our our resorts uh, nationally. So that that is something that we have seen uh, being quite uh, interesting for the domestic domestic market, and there's also adventure tourism that is 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 also quite something that the local market is interested in. We've seen uh, the, the, the industry also giving us very good uh, local prices for, for some of the adventure products that are out there. We have canopy tours and we've seen uh, the property owners bringing down the prices for the domestic market. So the industry is already working with us to address uh, the needs and to, to really be relevant to the local uh, populace. Uh, and the reality is that some of the people locally have even, some of them even lost their jobs. And it is in that regard that um, we, we do have to be sensitive and align our pricing accordingly. Okay, it, no. okay. so I, I, you know, I, I, I still have some questions here about what was, you know, did you offer the, the SMEs or the small businesses in the tourism space in the Swatini some uh, form of stimulus or relief package? Because we know uh, over 80% of the tourism business are the small and medium scale uh, 
business. Again, on your domestic tourism agenda, do you have deliberate policy, I mean, uh, 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 strategy that you, you, you as a tourism board may want to launch to, 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 to stimulate the interest of people appreciating the, the, you know, the country? Um, um, in terms of the st uh, stimulus package, we, we didn't really have a specific stimulus package to, to the tourism sector, but our government actually, actually that just did a, a stimulus package for all the business entities in the kingdom, and the tourism sector also took advantage uh, of that. And the key focus of that package was to really address the issues of um, dealing with employee wages and salaries uh, to, to avoid losing skilled staff uh, during this uh, pandemic. And then going, and also there's been also some tax breaks that have happened and other incentives that government put in place to address uh, issues of, of, of business in general. And then going back to the issue of domestic um, tourism, sorry, just, just, just re repeat your question again. No, no, no. You know, I was saying that what is the strategy, a deliberate strategy by the Swatini tourism, which you want to use to, to you know, uh, boost domestic tourism? Um, okay, in terms of, of just a deliberate strategy by the tourism authority, we, we, we are really going digital right now to make sure that we reach everyone uh, because people are always on their phones. So we are going digital and there's quite a number of digital campaigns that we have launched during uh, the, the, the pandemic. First of all, we, we, we launched a, a campaign that was really saying stay, stay at home and travel later. And then we did another one that says uh, sanitize um, mask up and the people are aware of, 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 of the fact that they now need to take uh, precautions as they travel and then now we will be doing the actual campaigns that are saying people can travel but that is aligned with the guidelines and making sure that the protocols are in place in the tourism and hospitality spaces and the drive again will be really to, 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 to say just to amplify the products that are there in Eswatini and also to put in place incentives for the local people to travel so that we stimulate mass traveling within Eswatini whilst taking the necessary precautions. What will be your parting words? And if, if, if I may add, what is it the one thing that you've learned, you know, uh, uh, during this COVID time that you want Eswatini tourism to come back or build back better? Hello, Linda. I think she's having some internet problems. Let me come to Sherry. Hello, Sherry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So we know that for Seychelles, sustainability, okay, so we know Seychelles sustainability and uh, how uh, you, 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 know, you protect the environment. Recently, your government dedicated 30% of their, you know, for, for marine protection, right? Of their economic zone. So what is it that you've, you, you may want to do better in spite of all the things they're doing? And going forward, how do you intend to build back better, you know, for, 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 for the tourism industry? Um, Kojo, I believe uh, the, um, the COVID uh, um, the period ah. have allowed us to, to sit down and take stock. Um, of our tourism industry and, and uh, we are at zero right now. So you, you only have upward to, to go. And uh, I believe it's a good opportunity um, for us to just ensure that uh, while we grow tourism, we keep on growing it sustainably. sustainably. I know we are leaders uh, um, in the world when it comes to, to sustainable tourism, to environmental protection, but um, our livelihood depends on, on tourism and depends on, on being able to nurture and grow the right kind of tourism that will stay um, for years and years to come. And uh, um, we've seen that uh, in the years we've had different kind of, um, of things which have, uh, which have grown in, in the marketplace, which is not necessarily in line with our brand or in line with what we were promoting. For example, we, we were coming with the Airbnbs of this world. We were coming at a point where we were starting to see a bit what is considered as backpacking 
tourism a little bit and and while we support the we, we support the idea of, uh, of inclusive tourism very much um, it has to be done in a very um, in a very controlled manner so that uh, this uh, few mishaps, we called it, having the wrong kind of visitors. It does not ruin um, uh, the experience of the rest others who is coming to Seychelles for a whole different other reasons. And that is to appreciate nature, um, um, the pristine nature, and to, to, uh, to enjoy what we are promoting. I believe um, uh, climate change remains a big issue worldwide. And while we think uh, COVID is, um, has, 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 uh, has really affected the uh, affected the um, world across uh, across the world um, once uh, we are hit with the wave, wave of climate change will be more uh, detrimental and the impact would be felt much much longer than what we are facing with COVID so in Seychelles we feel that we still have to keep on um, uh, talking about uh, um, conservation, about sustainable practices. It's, uh, we live and breathe it in Seychelles, so we have uh, um, to keep on saying that. And, and, and I, I, um, during this period, um, like what I said, um, uh, we have seen um, people have uh, developed an appreciation for nature. And I think we should use that as an opportunity um, uh, um, while they are more conscious of of uh, of uh, mother earth what what uh, we were given naturally and while now um going outdoor adventure adventure travel um, nature travel and um, there is a, even a trend i've seen called second city travel which is basically going a place which is less famous less crowded um while all these trends are developing i think it's it's the opportune time that uh, um, as Seychelles, we keep on um, spreading um, that message and uh, get the global community with us in, in, in this fight against uh, climate change. We want people to keep on traveling, but we want them to, to travel responsibly as, as well. And while mm -hmm. for island state like ours, where we depend on long haul travel a lot, um, so somebody will have to travel by plane, um, there's no ifs and buts about it, but you can offset this by other things um, you can do in, in your destination. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Sharing. And uh, I, I may you know, give you another chance to, to, to tell us one thing, just the one thing that you've, you've, uh, uh, you've taken out of this COVID in your going to a new normal or restarting tourism. In 10 seconds, yeah. Um, um, in 10 seconds, I, I would say um, travel will pick up definitely um, but it's it will be a different kind of travel and as tourism board we just have to 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 know what it is our customer want and uh, and seize it um, there is no such thing as a bad crisis and i think uh, the crisis uh, have taught us all good lessons uh, for the future for tourism especially thank you mrs sharon francis uh, Linda from Iswatini and all of you who are able to join us on this call. Thank you once again. And the audio and uh, video recording of this town hall will be available in the next two days. Thank you once again and join us on the next CEO town hall uh, meeting on, on, the, on the exchange. Thank you very much and see you, you again once again. Bye. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye.